good Sunday evening to you as we begin the service tonight. We'd like for you to join us in a song, This World Is Not My Home. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses together tonight. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home. song right there. Amen. As we uh, continue singing tonight, The Unclouded Day, we'll sing the first, second, and last verses of The Unclouded Day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise.
forward to that unclouded day and uh, all we have to look forward to in heaven. Uh, as we begin the service tonight, let's open in a word of prayer now. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you right now, we thank you for the opportunity it is once again to, to sing uh, of you and Dear God, even thinking of the unclouded day and what we have to look forward to in heaven. Dear God, uh, I pray that you would bless the service tonight, that you would be in every aspect of it, the songs, the special music. And then, dear God, I pray that you would be with Brother Brian as he preaches your word tonight. Use him and give him power from on high. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, we do thank you for joining us this evening and uh, look forward to the rest of the service and have enjoyed the singing already this evening. So appreciate the songs that Brother Andrew is picking out. And uh, if you'll listen and pay attention to the, uh, to the songs, you'll notice a theme through, uh, through each service in the, in the songs that are chosen. And so appreciate his work on that. Thank you for watching. We've had a great response. Uh, for those that have been watching uh, on YouTube, the uh, Sunday evening service like this, and then uh, the Wednesday evening service as well, appreciate you being uh, 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 faithful in watching the services. You say, well, how do you know that we're watching? Well, somebody is because it tells how many views are on there. That's the thing about Sunday morning's uh, radio broadcast. It's live, so we're not sure exactly how many people are, uh, are tuning in, but you can tell with the uh, YouTube, and I do appreciate your faithfulness and uh, pray that they have been a, a blessing to you. Thank you for your good response as well in the, uh, in the offerings. Uh, many have been stopping by and, and still yet many others have been mailing in their offerings. Appreciate your faithfulness in that as well. And uh, not just giving to your church, uh, but giving to the Lord is really what we're doing. And so I appreciate that. Thank you for your faithfulness in uh, doing so. Please continue to pray for uh, your country. Uh, pray for those around the world as, as well. And I, I forget the exact total now. I didn't look today. Uh, the number of countries that have been affected by the uh, coronavirus, but there are a, a large number of countries around the world, some hit harder than others. Some of them, uh, it uh, uh, tends to be or looks like it's improving uh, a little bit in some countries. Uh, and, and you know of uh, the numbers that are in our own country. Pray for your leadership. Pray for uh, President Trump and uh, Vice President Pence and those in the Senate and the House as well as they try to do what's uh, best for our country in uh, the response that they're giving and, and trying their best and governors around the nation as well and uh, even down to local governments you know our our local officials trying to do and, and set uh, guidelines uh, that would be best for the uh, containment of the virus and also uh, our health care workers uh, I appreciate the health care workers that we have even in our own church that uh, are so willing to uh, to be there for the needs of others so pray for church family pray for those that you know their names you know who they are that are on the front lines if you will uh, that are are doing their best to help others uh, be uh, healed through all of this uh, this time that we're in at the moment so pray for them continue to remember them and pray for the lord to continue to work in lives uh, i've heard word uh, uh, even already that the Lord has uh, been able to get a, the attention of some that uh, may not have been in church or maybe it's, uh, believers, Christians, that uh, maybe have been out of church. And now the Lord is working in their life to, uh, to speak to them and work even uh, during this particular time. So pray for them as well. If you have your Bible, look in Psalm 135. Psalm 135, verse number 5 is going to be our memory verse for this week you uh, heard us mention it this morning on the radio and now uh, this evening we want to mention it once again and it says psalm 135 verse number five says this for i know that the lord is great and that our lord is above all gods my friend uh, no matter what day it is mm -hmm. no matter what's going on in the world 
we always need the help of our God. Mm -hmm. And uh, as believers, he is not just God, he is God, our Heavenly Father. And I'm so thankful that we have uh, the one and true God. He is great, and he is above all other gods, because all other gods are false gods. And so, so thankful to have him in, uh, in my life, and I trust you are as well. Join us in singing once again. Brother Andrew is coming to sing Sunshine in My Soul. Brother Andrew, come right in. Let's sing the first, second, and last verses. Sunshine in my soul. There is sunshine in my soul today. coming to sing the special in song.
We, uh, we don't know when that day is going to be, but we know that we will hear the trumpet sound and uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds. And uh, looking forward to that day and what a blessing that will, will be. What a day that will be. Another great song dealing with the same, with the same <laughs> thought. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter number 8, 1 Kings number 8, as we uh, this evening uh, get back to uh, looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, our uh, series that we've been in on Sunday evenings, and uh, it's been, we've been looking at the thought of Israel's desire for a king, and we have uh, looked at Saul, the very first king, then we looked at David, and uh, several messages on the life of David. And we have entered now into the, the reign of King Solomon. Not as many chapters about him as there was uh, about David, but uh, some very important uh, truths can be learned even from the uh, life of Solomon. And we're going to be looking in 1 Kings number 8, down in verse number 54, <clears throat> if you uh, have your Bible open and are able to follow along, I would encourage you to do so. <clears throat> it says, and it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all his prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which uh, he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments and he commanded our, which he commanded our father and let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him, <clears throat> excuse me, offered sacrifice before the Lord. Verse number 63, And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord two and twenty thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Please bless our time together this evening that you would speak to our hearts. May we be listening and, and attentive to your work in our heart. And uh, may we be responsive to your, uh, your working in our heart that we would follow your direction. We love you so much. Thank you for loving us and caring for us and watching over us each and every day. And so we pray that everything that's said and done this uh, evening would bring honor and glory to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> How many of... Uh, you have desires, and I'm sure that that is, all of us could raise our hands, that we have desires of one sort of the, of the, or the other. You know, desires can be good. You can have good desires. You can have uh, desires of, of, uh, of, that would be pleasing to God, and desires that would be helpful to your family, and, and still uh, pleasing to God, of course, is number one priority, good desires. But there are also, we have to watch out and be careful because there's caution to desires as well. Because even good desires can turn into bad desires 
If we lose focus in the fact that we take God out of the equation, we take God out of the, the desire that we have, and good desires can be turned into bad desires, and then there are just some straight, complete, 100% evil desires that are desires that would be uh, against God and his teachings uh, for sure. So desires are normal. Matter of fact, the, the weather has been beautiful the last several days. The temperatures have been good, and, uh, and uh, of course mixed in with a little rain, but I have been having a desire in my heart to go fishing. I have been wanting to go fishing. Every time I cross the bridge, I look over at the river to see if the water is cleared up or if it's still muddy. I uh, have talked to people about uh, going fishing at the lakes and, uh, and what the condition of the lake uh, is in and is it muddy or what's what's going on and and uh, even at uh, different places have been closed off because of uh, trying to keep people from congregating at different bodies of water uh, so that they won't spread the virus and that type of thing but inside my desire is still to go fishing nothing wrong with that desire my uh, wife, Shanna, she wants me to go fishing. She has the same desire that I do with that, so that's good. And uh, <clears throat> I want to take uh, my son, Cole, want to take him fishing. And uh, so I have that desire, nothing wrong with it. Uh, it will be a blessing if I catch some fish. It will be a blessing that we can bring some fish home and uh, eat fresh fish. That is a good desire. Do you know even fishing? A good desire, nothing wrong with it, will help my family. If I'm not careful, even that can be uh, uh, go astray. I have to be cautious about it because it can go astray to where that desire overtakes what God wants for me. And, and I, my desire takes over what God uh, wants and what he desires for me. And so we have to be careful with desires. And we just read here. In, uh, in the, this end of the chapter, of chapter number 8, we see the desire of Solomon's heart. Great desires. A great desire in his heart for, for uh, his people and his desire towards God uh, as well. This is, a, this is a momentous occasion. This is the dedication of the temple of God. They have been desiring this. There's been seven years of preparation that has gone into this uh, building of the temple. Many people have been involved in preparing the way and, and uh, in uh, preparing the building materials and uh, uh, many people involved even in the construction and, and preparation of this temple. And now it's here and their desire is to dedicate it to God. Great desire. That is their, their plan of this particular day. And Solomon has prayed uh, in his prayer and, and spoken to God. And now he's turning to the people and he's sharing his desire that's on his heart with the others that are around him. But I, I think it's interesting you find that Solomon had called everyone together for this time, but... He prayed and talked to God first before he turned and he talked to the congregation and told them his heart and his desire. He, he talked to God first. You know, that would probably keep us out of trouble many times if we would talk to God first before we talk to others in many instances in our life. And so Solomon does this. He talks to God and he is here in verse number 20, uh, 56. He is uh, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel. According to all that he promised, there hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Solomon talks to God uh, and is referencing uh, God in his uh, his uh, faithfulness to the children of Israel here. And he is, he is uh, thankful and he says, bless the Lord for what he has done. He's given us the rest that we have been promised and that he had promised uh, uh, Moses back in that time. 
God had promised it, and he, and he promised it to Moses. And he even gave uh, a time of, of peace when Joshua conquered the land. And you can even see there in the book of Joshua how God gave rest, and God answered and kept his promises to these, his people. But you know, Solomon doesn't have to think back, but just uh, recent years, because one of the reasons David wasn't allowed to, uh, to build the temple himself, he had that desire. He had the desire to build the temple, but God didn't allow that desire to come to pass because David was a man of blood. David was a, a man that did not have peace in his time. It came at the end of his, uh, uh, towards the end of his reign when the land had been, uh, those foes had been defeated. And now God has given once again peace and a time of rest to the, uh, to the nation. And, and God has answered once again uh, a prayer, even, I mean a, a promise that he had even given to, uh, to David that his son would build the temple. And, and that it would be a time of rest and a time of peace. And once again, God has answered his, his, or answered his word and fulfilled his promise to the, to the people. And so Solomon here is what he's doing after he has prayed. He's drawing their attention. He's reminding them here. He's reminding the, the nation of Israel of just what God has promised. He's reminding them, this is what God said. And then he draws his, their attention to the fact that God kept his word. God always keeps his word. It doesn't matter who we are. It, as far as uh, 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 who I am, Brian Carson, or who you are, and fill in the blank. Put your name in there. God will always keep his promise to you. God keeps his promise to us, his, his children. And, uh, and we must acknowledge in our life, the promises that God keeps. We must recognize them and, and, uh, and realize them and, and pay attention to them and even thank God for his keeping of promises in our lives. He's given us the Holy Spirit, believer. He's given us the Holy Spirit to indwell us as the comforter, and he will never leave us nor forsake us, even in that aspect as the Holy Spirit will, uh, is a constant uh, presence with us in indwelling our hearts. God will answer and hear our prayer, another promise that he gives. God will, will uh, be there for us, and he will give us guidance through his word here as we read it and seek direction and seek wisdom. God will give it to us. It's a promise that he gives, and he will honor those promises even in our life. But notice with me in, in verse number 57 and in number 58 as well. As we see Solomon expressing his, his desire here uh, that he has, <clears throat> and that is that the Lord would be with them even as he was with their forefathers. Look, I mean, look in verse number 57. Lord, uh, the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him now, uh, let him not leave us nor forsake us. Look, and you don't have to turn there. You can listen if, if you so desire. But let me read in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse number three, as we consider the way that uh, God was with the forefathers of Solomon and, and those that came before. Verse number three says, the Lord thy God, he will be, and this is Moses speaking uh, here. It says, the Lord thy God, he will be over uh, before thee. And he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did unto Sihon and to Og, king of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Verse number six. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That was promises given to Moses and to the children of Israel, the forefathers that Solomon is even referencing here. And Solomon says, I, I want 
the Lord to make himself real. And my desire, my heart is that he would make himself real and, and lead us and guide us, even as he did in the generations before, that he would show himself real and be there for us as well in our generation, that God would lead us and protect us and provide for us and to, uh, to keep his promises once again to us and show us and remind us that he's doing that and that his presence would be uh, real with us and that we can be of good uh, cheer and, and be of good courage and be strong in the Lord in those promises. Just as he did in the generations before. And Solomon is, is saying, this is my desire, that it would be real to us. And that would, we would see it once again, uh, even in our generation. Why? So that they could prosper and gain more land? No. Although Solomon had a, a large kingdom, it's not so that they could gain more land or gain more riches. Solomon's the richest man uh, in the world at this uh, time. And, and so it's not so that the nation of Israel would prosper that way. No, verse number 58 shows us the reason that he desires for this presence of God and desires to have God be known uh, in this generation as he was in the time before. Because in verse number 58, you see that he may incline our hearts unto him. His desire is not physical gain or spiritual gain, uh, 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 monetary gain or any kind of gain like that. His desire is spiritual gain. God, make yourself real to this generation. Those that are around me now and those that are, are to, uh, uh, that are the children of the time and they would grow up and they would see your presence strong and they see your presence real. Not so that we can, we can uh, gain physically and monetarily, but so that you can incline our hearts. You can turn our hearts. You can turn and bend our hearts towards you. That's my desire, God. That is my desire. And he is explaining this to the, the nation of Israel as they gathered there. And we didn't read down in the verses towards the end of the chapter. But you see people all across the nation of Israel from the north to the south, from east to west. They are here. and They've come together so that they can worship the Lord. They can dedicate the temple. And, God, and Solomon says, this is my desire for us, Israel, is that God would show himself in the mighty ways as he did in the past to our forefathers, that he'll do it even now, today, so that we in our hearts will be bent towards him, inclined to him, and will turn our hearts, and he will help turn our hearts towards him. This is the most important purpose. This is the most important desire that he can have. And, uh, you know, in our lives, it's, it's uh, a temptation to everyone to allow uh, another part of your life, another portion of your, your life, to, to sort of overshadow uh, and get the more emphasis upon it as opposed to the spiritual side of your life. And, and there are things in our lives, whether it be hobbies or whether it be finances or whether it be your family, whether it be your friends, whether whatever it might be, you fill in the blank. <clears throat> there are things that we can place in where God should be as far as the spiritual aspect of our life and we can allow them to, to rule and take over our life and, and put a emphasis on that as opposed to the spiritual side. When in reality, the spiritual side should be our foundation. It, it is, if you want to think of it as a painting, it should be the backdrop for everything else that is in our life. So the spiritual side of our life should be the backdrop in which everything else fits in its perfect place. It's a very important part of of your life and of my life. We should desire to, to have the spiritual side of our life be the most important part. We should desire, even as Solomon here, we should desire that God would turn our heart and incline our heart to him so that that is a major focus of our life. <clears throat> our heart uh, tendency uh, in, the, in the natural man, in, in the, in the uh, flesh, the natural and the flesh uh, man, he desires 
to go on his own way in his heart, to do what he so desires, to, to lead his life according to his uh, needs and his fulfillment. That's the natural uh, man. That was the way the unsaved individual, the unsaved life lives his life. And that's the way the carnal man, the, the backslidden believer, the backslidden Christian lives his life according to what meets my desires, but the spiritual man. The one who is in tune and yielded to the Holy Spirit in their life will desire that their life should model and follow what God has for them. That should be our desire. Look in verse number 59 here, verse number 59 and 60. You'll see another desire that uh, Solomon expresses here. <clears throat> Excuse me, he says, And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night. So, Brother Brown, what, what, what are you trying to say here? Here's what Solomon is saying. He's saying, may all of the prayer, and we've read them before, and if you haven't read the previous verses, and we didn't have time today, if you haven't read the prayer of Solomon here, <clears throat> that begins... Uh, there in uh, verse number 25 uh, here or, or 24 and it continues on until he addresses the, uh, the people at the end of verse number 23. If you haven't read that, I'll just give you a, a quick synopsis of what he has prayed in his prayer. He desires that God would continue to work through the different aspects of his prayer in direction, in restoration, in forgiveness, in teaching, in awareness of heart, in witness and in continued usefulness of them as a nation of Israel. And what Solomon is saying here, I desire not only that God would make himself evident to us in our generation, but also I pray that, that uh, as a continual state of prayer, that uh, uh, as God is, has heard my prayer, that God will continue to work in these areas in my life and as uh, in our life as a nation and that he would provide these things in our life and he would he would work in our hearts and our lives in these ways for what purpose you might say for what purpose he says that he may uh, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his uh, of his servant and of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require. God, have your way. Work with us and work in our lives in whatever way is necessary so that our purpose, our cause is seen and it's evident. And he says in verse number 60, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is none else. Why was he desiring that, that, the, that God would continue working and answering his prayer in these ways in time to come and in the present time as well? Because he wanted, he desired that the people of all the earth would know that he, the Lord, is God. Great desire. Great desire. He wanted people to see the nation of Israel and say, huh. Their God is the true God. And at different times, in, in, in different uh, instances, they, the other nations around uh, the nation of Israel would recognize and would see and would understand that there is only one God. There is only one true God. And, and even in the hearts of Israel, when they would go astray into following the false gods of the area and the region and those around them as they would promote their false gods, and Israel would stray away. And, and here in the, in the nation of Israel, uh, still a united kingdom. But there's coming a time to where the nation is going to be divided. And, and uh, the kings are going to be wicked. And they're going to lead Israel and lead Judah in the wrong directions. And they're going to follow after false gods. And 
they're going to need to remember and the prayer of Solomon here is going to continue to need to be answered because the nation of Israel, when they turn from their way and they go into bondage or they lose their land, they're going to have to be reminded that there is only one God. There's only one in, one uh, true God upon uh, in the universe and it is, it is the God of Israel here, God Jehovah. And the, their, his desire is that others around them would see that there is only one God. How about you? How about you? Ask yourself that question. Even as Solomon says it here, do you desire that others around you would see that there is only one God and one God only in this universe? And he is the God, your heavenly father. And see how that he is working in your life and making a difference in your life. And that, that your cause, your purpose in your life to bring glory to him is evident and seen in your life. Is that your desire? Do you want that for your life? Even as Solomon wanted it for the people here in the nation of Israel. Well, we also see here in verse number 61 and, and in verse number 62... Yet another desire that Solomon has. Solomon has a desire for, uh, for those uh, uh, around him. He desires for the correct response from the people. You know, we've said this many times. Pastors around the, the nation today have uh, no doubt said this uh, somewhere along the line. It does not matter how much of the Bible we read or we study and we look at and we or even we talk about. It doesn't matter how much of it we look at. If we do not apply it to our heart, then it does no good. It's of to no avail. So Solomon says, this is my desire for you, the children of God, that you have the right response to Almighty God. We, you have the right response to, uh, to, uh, to him. And he says in verse number 61, let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes, to keep his commandments as at this day. He wants them to go uh, to follow and to go in the direction towards uh, uh, their heart towards God to be perfect with the Lord in other words to be complete to be to be uh, full in their obedience and their understanding of his requirements and in their obedience to uh, to God but here's the here's the thing just as it is with all of us here is here it is the choice was theirs the choice to to follow the Lord, to have the right relationship with uh, Almighty God, to, to follow his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his precepts, to follow them and to do them according to what God had laid out for them, according to the instructions that was given to God, uh, was given to Israel in the past. Uh, by God to Moses and to Joshua and to the other leaders through the time and even Samuel as he would direct the people and yet they chose and wanted a King Saul even all of these these uh, uh, precepts that are laid out by those that were leading the nation of Israel by God's direction even having all of that they had to make the choice to follow to do what was given unto them to do and he says let your heart it's it's mo i mean it's uh uh the desire of solomon here that they should listen and observe and do the commandments of the lord let your heart therefore be perfect with the lord our god but notice what he's saying here not just now but in the future in the time to come when this big day has, has uh, sort of, uh, the memory of it has sort of waned and it's, it's not as much of an impact anymore because there's time passed and been water under the bridge and life has happened through the days as they pass by. And he says, listen here, pay attention here because 
I want you to walk in the commandments and, and obey these statutes and follow him. Let your heart turn towards him like it's supposed to as it is this day. Because Solomon knew there would be a day that they would lose that fire. They would lose that zeal that they had for uh, Almighty God. There would be a day to where they wouldn't be as, as excited about it. And Solomon says, continue to choose right. Continue to choose living for God in this way. My friends, I just, I'll be honest with you. My desire uh, as Brian Carson, not just as a pastor or, or a, a husband or a, a father, my desire for Brian Carson to be the right child of God, to be the right believer that I need to be. My desire is to follow and walk in God's commandments and his precepts and his principles, to obey them and to follow them. But my desire is the same for you. As you're sitting there, whether it's around your kitchen table or, or at a break table on the, on the job or wherever you might be right now, my desire for you, church family, my desire is, is that you, would obey and follow God's commandments and his precepts in your life and that you would not only today uh, in the midst of whatever's going on in your life, not only today, but in time to come. And my desire as pastor for you, the, uh, the, one, the, the church members, the church family that God has given me to be concerned with and to watch over and to pray for, my desire for you is that you would continue, not just today, but in time to come, follow God. What's your desire? What's your desire? You may have thought of a bunch of different desires that you have in your life. But is your desire, number one, to follow God and to obey Him and to learn more about Him and to acknowledge His blessings in your life and to desire to put him first is that your desire if it's not it needs to be it has to be if we're going to be right with god this evening we're going to close the service with a a uh, verse of invitation i'm going to ask brother andrew to come and and lead us as uh, he has been and as we've done uh here recently we're going to take that verse of invitation and uh, as we sing it you can either sing it there where you are or you can you can uh, use it as a time to pray talk to the Lord maybe you need your desires in your heart to be uh, adjusted and brought back into focus and follow what his desire is whatever it is that the Lord is dealing with your heart in tonight I pray at this time you would talk to him and make it right. Brother Andrew, if you'll lead us. All to Jesus I surrender All to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him again this evening with the desire of our hearts turned towards you Lord that we would continue not just today and not just during these uh, trying times of what's going around in, in the world around us but Lord we desire that our hearts continually be inclined to you, turn towards you, bent towards you, and that you would help us, Lord, in our efforts to follow you in that way. 
Lord, even as Solomon had for the same desire for his people and for himself, we desire the same today. Lord, if there are uh, some that are listening today that don't know the Lord is their Savior, I pray that they'll contact us. They'll, Lord, reach out to us and we can show them how you love them and sent your son to die for them on the cross and that they too can have a relationship with you and follow you. Pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm going to sing a closing chorus and I encourage you to join Brother Andrew as he leads us. Brother Andrew, come right ahead. Join me in a chorus of heavenly sunlight. Heavenly sunlight.